I think the key to getting proportions as accurate as possible when we draw is the way we think and the way we structure the order in which we draw. The things that we look for, points of alignment, points of reference, how we use the parts of our drawing that we've already drawn and so forth. So let me step through how I would draw this section of the facade of the Pelagania freehand and keep it in proportion, have it so that it's looking correct in my drawing. The first thing I do is I look for what I think of as the simplest element to draw as accurately as possible. And it's often a column. And so it's going to be one of these columns here. Now, I'm not including the capital at this point because these capitals are quite high. I'm just wanting to visualize this as a long rectangle. And so I'm trying to just get a sense of how long that would be and how wide it has to be for that proportion. And I'm going to keep it something like that. And then there is a base which is important in this case to include. Now we have the capital on top. And I look at this and there's kind of two sections between here and here that go there. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking allowing space for two sections. So I'm thinking that the top of the capitals are about there. Now, I don't want to draw that yet because I actually want to draw this second column in and I, I want to know how much room exactly I have there. So now I've committed with this as a reference point, I can line up this column with it. And when I draw this column, I'm also looking at this shape that's created between the two of them. I'm looking to replicate that shape. So now I can do these capitals. And that will do for now. So now I've got a top line and I have a bottom line. But I don't know how far across I want to take it. So I'm not going to go too far with that. The next thing I want to do is, well, I've got this line down here of the top of the balustrade. That lines up with this section here, which I've already got, so that's okay. But then I've got these two columns here, and so they line up with this line here. So I need to work out where that line goes across. And above that line, there is also a circle that has to fit there. And so I'm, I'm looking at these things. So the, the circle is going to sort of start there. And if it goes down to there, and then there's there and there. And then there's this line down here. That's probably not quite long enough. Maybe it's just a little bit more. I'm thinking of there and there. And then we have here. And now we have the spot where these columns go. And am I happy with that or does it feel a bit too high? I feel like it feels like it's too high. And I'm not worried about these lines because I think they'll be hidden enough at the end. So now I need to draw this column. And what I'm doing is I'm creating this space. So now I can continue this along. And now I, in effect, want to draw this rectangle here. About right to me, or maybe. And then I need another column that goes there. And now I have another big column that lines up with here. So it's getting these, this alignment worked out too. So I want this column to come down about here. And again, I'm drawing the gap between the two columns. I can now also put on the capitals. On each side of these columns, there is another strip of building that's a bit narrower than the columns themselves. And we can take that up to just below the top of the capital. So now I have this entablature to draw. And the entablature is in two sections, a planar section and 
a more complicated one. So I need to just notice that the entablature lines up with the edge of the column, not the edge of the capital. So there's the plane section. And we have this word in here, choreography, that lines up with there. So I'm going to add that at this point simply to help distinguish what's what in this. And now on top of that, we've got a little bit more where we have the little teeth. And that extends over the top quite a bit. And now we have this curve and the curve behind it. Now we notice that this now angles like that and this angles like that. And I like to estimate where the top of the curve is going to be in relation to here. So from here to here, from there to there, it's a bit like the distance from there to there, isn't it? So it's going to be there. So it's sort of like from there to there, there to there, here to here. I'm just pushing all my lights away so I can, I can access it a little more accurately. And fortunately, that'll all be hidden with this decorative part here. So we'll leave that at this point. And now let's go back to working out just down here. So this actually comes out here and here. And this entablature, uh, this section of the wall comes up too. And then it comes out a bit here. And now it would have helped if I'd drawn this in in the right order, but never mind, I'll just add it now. And then we have this decorative feature that sits on the center line. Keeping things aligned is important. So the top of this is going to be there, which means I can now put this line across because this line lines up with the top of that. Now, these lines here, this one isn't as obvious because of the shadows, but this one here and lines up with about there. And this one similarly lines up about there. But I also want them to look even as well up here. So I can make a slight adjustment there. Now, of course, that's the top one, so these lines come underneath. And then I can also look at shapes such as this one here and to see other proportions similar in mine or not. So now I locate the top and bottom of this circle. And if I think that's too large, I can bring it in because there is some decorative framing as well. Having established now the proportions of this section, I can actually now put time into just filling in, if you like, the decorative elements that we have here. So now that we've got the general outline on paper in proportion, we've got where the, the major elements sit and we're confident with where we've positioned them, now we can actually start to put the sort of detail in that it's a mistake to put in too early. Because in the bare outline form, even as it was now, we can still make adjustments. We do have tricks up our sleeve where we can slide columns slightly to one side sometimes with how we put shadows that come up adjacent to them. Or we can slightly increase some 
elements around other elements to change the visual impression that we get. So we don't want to start to now fill in, if you like, the architectural clutter before we've maximised our ability to make adjustments to anything we don't see until we've progressed the, the outline of this section to a pretty considerable degree. But once we're confident, once we're happy with the proportions that we've got, either that we think they're correct or we really can't do anything about it, so we're just going to now continue, now we start to fill in the details. And it's a lot more fun doing the detail if we're not worried about the proportions, because now we can focus on creating the effect that we want to create from our reference or from what we see in front of us or from our imagination. Now, I'm just seeking to replicate what's in the photo. So I'm wanting to indicate the architectural decoration that we see and also the shade and the shadows that are cast in this section of the Palais Garnier facade. It is important to pay attention so that we don't suddenly find that we've put shadow in the middle of a column rather than in the gap between two columns. And now I'm doing uh, perhaps one of the more tricky parts, the sculptural works in this arched pediment. I find with this, it's important not to try to draw little figures they will just look distorted. But to simply try and capture some of the geometric shapes we see, especially heads, maybe sometimes spots where lines of fabric are drawn up together, maybe give a hint of a knee or an elbow, particularly using negative space, particularly using the shadows that are cast. And now I'm just putting those shadows into create the effect. If you look closely at these figures, they, they aren't really figures at all, but they create the effect of the detail. We don't have to draw the detail if we work on this technique of drawing the effect. So now I'm putting the word choreography in. Notice I locate the center letter and put that in first. It's the best way to keep wording symmetrical in places such as this. So now I'm just working on some more shadow. Trying to work out how much to do, how far up I'll go. And I decide that I'll do this next little section. I, I would have put the statue on top, but I actually don't think I had room on my paper to do that. So I reluctantly left this wonderful sculptural group. But you'll notice now with these little brackets, how I position them. And I actually position the gaps between the pairs and then I put the division between the pairs. That way I'm having to position less elements and therefore it's easier to position them more accurately in terms of spreading them across. And it is important to get them right because these little opera masks sit above each, each set of brackets. And so if I get those correct, I've now positioned where these in effect, little visual bumps sit on the very top of the facade. And now I just put a few lines in for the base of the sculptural group. And now I'm thinking, can I draw it? Can I draw it? Oh, I don't know that it's going to fit. So I leave it. And so this is, this is the fun bit, having worked, getting the proportions correct, observing really carefully, choosing parts that we can draw most accurately, most easily positioning those, paying attention to negative space as much as the object that we're trying to draw, working out alignment of things that we haven't drawn with things that we're about to draw from our reference and then on our drawing. These are all the techniques I use when I'm drawing freehand in ink when there's no erasing possible to get my drawing as accurate in its proportions as possible. The problem with sped up drawings is you can't always see how much time I spend thinking about it. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you give it a go. Yes, you will find the photo on my channel community page. But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.